let us discuss about the deep fascia of the thigh. The deep fascia of the thigh is also called as the fascia lata. This fascia lata is a tough fibrous sheet that envelops the whole of the thigh like a sleeve and it has a following attachments. Superiorly, it is attached to a boundary line between the lower limb and the pelvis. Thus, anteriorly, it is attached to the inguinal ligament, laterally to the iliac crust, posteriorly through the gluteal fascia, it gives attachment to the sacrum and coccyx and also the sacrotuberous ligament and medially to the pubis, the pubic arch and the ischial tuberosity. These are the superior attachments of the fascia lata and inferiorly it gives attachment on the front and sides of the knee. Here the fascia lata is attached to the subcutaneous bony prominences and also the capsule of knee joint where posteriorly it forms the strong popliteal fascia which continues below with the fascia of the back of the leg. So this is the organization and the attachment of the deep fascia of the thigh which is also called as the fascia lata. After the deep fascia of the thigh, now we are going to discuss about a modifications of the fascia lata called as the iliotibial tract. At the lateral part of the fascia lata, you can see the fascia lata is thickened or we can say that the thickened part of the fascia lata laterally forms a 5 cm wide band called as the iliotibial tract. Superiorly, this tract splits into two layers to form the superficial lamina and the deep lamina, where the superficial lamina is attached to the iliac crest. And also the deep lamina blends with the capsule of the hip joint. And inferiorly, this tract is attached to a smooth area on the anterior surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia. Now let us see what is the importance of this iliotibial tract. First one. The two important muscles are inserted into its upper parts, that is between the superficial and deep laminae. These are three-fourth part of the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata. These are the two important muscles are inserted into its upper part of the iliotibial tract. Not only that, the iliotibial tract also stabilizes the knee both in extension and in partial flexion. That is the reason it is therefore used constantly during walking and running. So this is one of the important modification of the fascia lata called as iliotibial tract. And another important modification, second one, is the softness opening. The softness opening is an oval opening in the fascia lata and the center of the opening is 4 cm below and 4 cm lateral to the pubic tubercle. And if you see the dimensions of the softness opening, it is about 2.5 cm long and 2.5 cm broad with a long axis which is directed downwards and laterally. The opening has a sharp lateral margin which is also called as the falciform margin which lies in front of the femoral sheet 
and the medial margin of the femoral opening or the saphenous opening lies at the deeper level when compared to that of the lateral margin where it is formed by the fascia overlying the pectineus the lateral margin forms the falciform margin and the medial margin is formed by the fascia overlying the pectineus muscle and this fascia passes behind the femoral sheet and the saphenous opening is closed by a fascia called as cribriform fascia which covers the outermost part of the saphenous opening so here we are discussing about the modifications of the fascia lata first we discussed about uh, the iliotibial tract next we saw the saphenous opening and the fascia lata also gives off the intermuscular septa these intermuscular septa divides the thigh into three compartments that is the lateral intermuscular septum is a thick end of all the other septa which extends from the iliotibial tract to the lateral lip of linea aspera this lateral intermuscular septum separates the anterior compartment of the thigh from the posterior compartment and the next is the medial intermuscular septum the medial intermuscular septum is attached to the medial lip of linea aspera and separates the anterior compartment of the thigh from the medial compartment and finally the posterior intermuscular septum is poorly defined it is not much thicker when compared to that of the lateral intermuscular septum and the medial intermuscular septum and it separates the medial compartment of the thigh from the posterior compartment like that you can see three intermuscular septa which are derived from the fascia lata they are the lateral intermuscular septum the medial intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum which divides the thigh into three compartments that is anterior compartment medial compartment and posterior compartment so by this we successfully completed the deep fascia called as the fascia lata and the modifications of the deep fascia that is the modifications of the fascia lata they are of three in number one is the iliotibial tract second is the saphenous opening and the third is the intermuscular septa